Hey everybody, it's Mike Delisio with another Dice Tower Review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at The Ancients, the newest expansion for Wildlands from designer Martin Wallace and publisher Osprey Games. The Ancients is the newest expansion for the Wildlands game system. It's the first big box expansion. It's modular, it does a number of different things. So let's head over to the table, I'll show you all about the expansion, then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Wildlands The Ancients is a modular expansion that has a number of different things that you can add to the core game to change up the experience. One of the things that you can do is in the War for the Crystals portion of this expansion, you could play team games from four to six players. If you're going to be playing with six players, then you're going to need a copy of either the Undead, uh, Unquiet Dead, or Adventuring Party, which were earlier faction expansions that came out, and they gave you some crystals and bases that you could use for those if you're going to be playing a six-player game. If you're going to be playing a five-player game, then the team that plays with two, because you'd have one team of three and one team of two, the team that plays with two has to choose the Ancients as one of their factions. And that's another one of the modules, is that now you can play with these Ancients as an actual faction in any game of Wildlands. They obviously have the miniatures that go along with them and so let me show off these minis these are some very nice pre-washed minis as all of the wildland miniatures have been pre-washed these are larger than most of the traditional characters in wildlands as you might expect because they're these kind of big boss kind of creatures all right so i'm just quickly showing off the detail on these minis. I think they're quite nice. Okay, uh, but when you play with the Ancients as a faction, it is slightly different. There's some differences that you are going to have. You are going to have a regular deck uh, of your action cards like you normally would that have the different Ancients here, the different actions there, uh, but they play slightly differently. Okay, so when you are playing as the Ancients as your faction, you are not going to have shards for your own color. You're, you're not going to also have bases on your minis as well. You're not choosing a color, okay? What happens is you can claim uh, shards of any color that's on the board if you're the Ancients, following the normal rules. And when you do, you place that shard on your card. So let's say the Automaton had captured a shard. They would put it on their card. And now what they can do on a future turn, you couldn't do it on the turn that you gained it, you can use those shards to trigger the special ability of whatever ancient you like. So in lieu of playing a card, you could pay a shard to do the, act, the action for each one. So for the Phantasm, and these are all pretty powerful as you might expect, take up to four move or climb actions and every time that you enter a space, you do a melee action against each character in that space. So that's pretty powerful. You can up to four times, move or climb, and then attack every character in that space. So pretty powerful. For the automaton, you can take any number of damage up to your full. So if you are at full health, you couldn't take all five, but you could take uh, as much damage as you could without knocking yourself out. And every time you do so, you can either do a regular or heavy melee uh, action. So also very powerful. The lizard man here can do these things in order. They can do a heavy melee, then move or climb, then melee, move or climb, and then melee again. All right, so again, at the right time could be very, very powerful. The Magus here can move any two revealed characters to any one space, and this could be uh, players on your team or on opponent's teams. And then the Tyrant here, all other Ancients take up to two move or climb actions and then do a melee attack. So. Again, those are all special powers that they can do in lieu of playing cards, and they spend, though, they spend a shard that they've previously collected to do so. So, obviously you're spending shards. You are only going to win if you are the um, Ancients by knocking out the, uh, the other characters, okay? So, uh, it's a little bit different. Also, 
each ancient that gets knocked out by another player is worth two points. All right, so they are harder, you know, kind of to deal with, but they also are worth twice as many points as well. All right, so the setup is also going to be a little bit different, obviously, with these. Um, but generally speaking, you play them as a normal faction with some slight differences. All right, these are the two kind of smaller aspects of this modular expansion playing as them as a faction or playing a team game. Uh, but the biggest aspect, the biggest part of this is going to be the Awoken, which is going to allow you one or two players to play cooperatively against these ancients as your enemy. And so I'm going to take a little break, break out those components and show you how that works. Okay, so for the Awaken portion of the expansion, which is really the biggest kind of change that this expansion brings, you can play cooperatively, either two players or one player, and you would choose a scenario sheet. And there's a number of them here that come with the game. Industrial Revolution, Elemental Power, Invaders from Another Plane, Rise of the Lizard Folk, Greed, greed Gold, and Goblins. And if you were playing with two players, you would choose two of these on the A side, and you would face that number of uh, ancients. So in this case, let's say you were playing a two-player game, and you went with these two, you'd be facing off against the Automaton here and the Magus. If you're playing as a single player, what you're going to do is flip it over to the B side, and now this is going to be your scenario sheet for that game. And generally speaking, what you're going to do is you are going to have a different setup. I don't have the board all set up here, but you would already have all of your pieces on the board. You would have these object tokens that were randomized face down and placed on all the spots of the board that you would do randomly by drawing map cards. And you, would, you might have some starting minions out here on the board as well, all right? And so what you, what you would do is normally, you're gonna play the game as you normally would. You're gonna be spending your cards to move around the map. You're going to be flipping over these object tokens. You're gonna potentially be battling against these minions. So in a one player game, just by being in a spot with one of these tokens, you can flip them over. In a two-player game, you have to actually spend a card of the character to do it. But I just put one of each of the different types of tokens. So what are the things that can happen? There, you can get your ancient shard. These are what you're trying to collect to win the game or to knock out the, uh, the ancients. So you have the shard. You might have these, which are just basically removed from the map. They don't do anything. Here you've got an explosive trap, which is going to obviously do you some damage. Here you've got treasure, and if you draw treasure, what you do is you would just randomly choose something off the treasure deck that's going to give some kind of power. Deal three damage to a minion or ancient in this space. You can do it one time. So there's one-time use cards like th that or the stim packs. There's also cards like this that are persistent effects. Whenever this character collects an ancient crystal, deal two damage to a minion or an ancient in line of sight. So all good. Some of them one time use, some of them persistent. Um, then you've got a stasis trap, which is my most annoy, annoying trap for me is that when I flip these over, this basically freezes your character. You can still attack, but you can't move. And the only way to get rid of these is if one of those treasure cards allows you to move the character, or if all of the stasis traps are revealed, then the uh, characters can all move. This is a pit trap, which basically you have to try to draw cards that have your character's symbol. You draw two cards, and if your symbol is there, then you avoid the damage, otherwise you take a damage. So you're moving around the board, turning over those tiles, collecting uh, ancient shards as much as you can, attacking minions to hopefully keep them from uh, doing damage to you. The minions are gonna act after you move, or after you do all your actions, you're gonna flip over a card. Also, these cards are used to potentially block. So if I had done an a attack against this uh, gizmo here, or gnome, I should say, sorry, I would flip over a card randomly and see if they had a block there. So let's say I had done a melee attack against this gizmo, here, and then I flipped it over to see if they blocked it. Well, yes, melees are blocked by that symbol. This is the blocking area, so they would have blocked it. But what it also is gonna do, let me get that in, in some uh, focus for you, is it's gonna let you know what these characters are gonna do. So in this case, the gnomes are gonna heal either a gizmo or an automaton, which is the uh, ancient that is in this one, and they're gonna do that twice. 
this character here, this minion, this gizmo, if it's on the board, is going to take two movement actions. And then if it didn't have any damage on it, it would take a damage and do a heavy melee. So it's going to go through these in order if they can. If they're not on the board, you skip them. And then you look at the bottom here. That's going to always trigger no matter what. And it's going to usually be some type of keyword. So in this case, it said organize. And we look here and it says... If there are more gizmos on the board than gnomes, summon two gnomes. Otherwise, summon a gizmo and a gnome. So it's going to tell you things to do. And a lot of times, what it's going to tell you to do is to move this shard along the track. So it might tell you to summon a gizmo and a gnome. Automate, which is going to kind of do something I'm just trying to find. Here we go. Advanced tracker. All right. When that happens, you move it along its, its uh, track, and it's going to have you do different things, like summon the automaton. So in this case, this is the ancient that you're going to be fighting. You would draw a map card. It would tell you where to place that, and now it's going to also do a turn during the enemy turn, and these are usually pretty, pretty powerful actions as well. All right? So... You win the game by collecting the uh, either all the shards or defeating the ancients, although this particular ancient can't be defeated, so you have to collect the shards if you're playing on this particular board. This is going to move along. You're going to lose if all of the characters in your faction lose. If it's a single player, if it's a multiplayer, if all of the characters in one of the factions uh, die, then you lose. Or you could lose the game by going to the end of the tracker there. So... That's kind of the biggest part of this expansion is allowing you to play cooperatively. Let's really quickly look at the map that came with the game as well. It's a double-sided map here. And so let me just shoot this over to the side a little bit. I think you can see most of what we have to see here. So this is like an, a, it's called the Abyssal Lake. And it's got some special uh, elements to it. It's got a slippery surface. When a character enters a space, if they've taken two or more move actions that turn, they can choose one other character in the same space and move it into any adjacent space. So I'm going to use these because I have these handies. If you had moved uh, up to two times, like one, two, any character in there, you could push them to an adjacent space because it's slippery. But you have to be careful because you might land on some thin ice like this one. You can see that kind of shattered circle there. Um, whenever a character enters a space with thin ice, every other character in that space takes a damage, you can block it by using a cover action. So it's an interesting way of maybe doing some damage to other players. All right, so that's one side. The other side of the board is our conveyor belt side. All right, a very different looking board. And you can see that the main kind of focus here are these two conveyor belts, the red and the blue conveyor belt. All right. Um, and so when you score a point, if when a player scores a point by knocking out a character or collecting a shard, they can activate one of these conveyor belts. And if they do so, then everything on those conveyor belts are going to move one space forward. If, if it's in this uh, area, you can choose which one it's going to be going on. They don't leave the board. They just wrap around. So anything that's going from four is going to come back down here to 40. Everything from nine is going to go there to 34. All right. So those are the main aspects of the game, the cooperative mode, these two new maps, being able to play as the Ancients as a faction, and then the team variants. So let's head back over, and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this expansion as a whole. Okay, so hopefully you have a pretty good idea on all of the changes that the Ancients brings to the core Wildlands game system. First thing I want to do is talk about art and components. And the art is something that I've liked throughout the entire series, so that continues with this. The uh, the miniatures that come with it, the Ancients miniatures, are really nice. They're a bit larger than the standard minis, and they're nicely detailed. I like that they're all pre-washed. They're very easy to differentiate. That was an argument that I had, or a complaint that I had with the core Wildland system, was that the base factions were sometimes hard to tell apart. No, no such issue here. The Ancients are very easy to tell apart. Nicely detailed minis. The card quality is good. Uh, I have no complaints about that. The one thing, and it's not specific to this expansion, but I did want to mention it, is that the, the maps are, are very shiny. And, and uh, sometimes, depending on the lighting in the room, it could be a little bit hard sometimes to tell to see because of the glare. Not a big deal, but I did think I'd mention it since we're talking about art and components. Overall, the, uh, the component quality is good. I've got no complaints about that. Um, I think that the, the overall component and art quality is positive. So, about the actual review, the meat of the game. First thing I want to do, since it's modulars, I'm just going to talk about the different aspects of 
the expansion one by one. The first thing is to talk about the map. I like the new map that's included, kind of the, the abyssal lake, I think it's called, the, the snowy, icy uh, side of the map. That's good fun. I think that it's pretty much all on one plane. I don't believe there's any elevation in that map, so you don't kind of worry about elevation at all. I, I like the, the slippery uh, aspect, the slippery, I don't remember what it's called, but basically where you can move twice or more, and in that space, you can push somebody off of it. The thin ice is a nice little tactical thing to consider where you can end your turn on a thin ice space and everyone else gets damaged, but could even be your own player, so that's a consideration. Uh, that's kind of a neat, uh, a neat aspect of it. And then on the other side, you've got the uh, conveyor belts map. That's clever. It has just kind of that central space that is up higher, so you can do some elevation things there. Uh, that is unique. I, I don't think that any of the other maps have anything quite like that where you have the two conveyor belts and you can push things along. That's cute. It, it adds some nice little things to consider. You're not going to be triggering it all that often, but uh, it can be important depending on the situation. That, that movement of a conveyor belt can be pretty big. So overall, it's a nice map. Uh, I can see playing that on uh, any number of occasions. Next is team mode. Well, the team mode I think is, is cool. It's nice that it's there and it's nice to be able to up the player count. You can now play five or six player Wildlands. But honestly, it's probably not going to be my preferred way to play this system. Uh, to me, this system is best as a small player count. A really one or two player game, I think, is where Wildlands shine. Sure, it's great to have this option. And, and if you have a big group of people that kind of want to play a game like this, you could do a lot worse, but it's not going to be my favorite way to play the game. Playing as the Ancients, as an actual faction, is really cool. I like the, um, the kind of the switch up to the core system that these Ancients bring, where you're not collecting shards of your own color, but you're collecting everybody else's shards, and you are using them to trigger the powers on these, uh, on these big uh, figures that you're controlling around the board. Really cool. I like that. And I also like that the Ancients are worth two points for opposing factions because it makes it, uh, it gives you, if you're playing the Ancient faction, a little bit of a concern because you get two of your guys, two of your figures knocked out. That's four points essentially for whoever has done it, if they both get you. Um, so I like being able to play as the Ancients as well. But the biggest aspect of this game, the biggest aspect of this expansion is the cooperative, the Awoken. And I do have to say, I love being able to play this game solo, especially, or two-player co-op. I like having that option. There was no way really to play the game solo before. Now, that being said, if I'm playing a two-player game, I'm pretty much always going to choose to play competitive versus cooperative. I would choose to play the cooperative game two-player only if the person that I'm playing with does not like direct combat games. They don't like the head-to-head the -head thing. If you have a, a gaming partner that does not like direct conflict but likes these kind of tactical skirmish games, this is a nice option because you're both fighting against a shared enemy. You're not fighting against each other. For me, I am always going to choose in a two-player game to go with that kind of head-to-head -head because I just love the initial setup of Wildlands where you're placing where your uh, faction is going to go and where your opponent's shards are going to go. And that gets removed in the, mo in the uh, comp cooperative game. Excuse me. So... I like it better that way, but I like that the option is there for people that uh, want to play the game cooperatively. Overall, the Wildlands system is such an enjoyable and versatile gaming system to me. I think of it really like that, as a game system. All of the expansions have added nice little twists, whether it's the, the, um, the extra factions like the Unquiet Dead or the Adventuring Party. All of the maps have added a nice little twist, but it's really all down to that core card system that I like so much. And this uh, continues that and allows you now to play it uh, competitive or competitively, cooperatively, team mode. You can play as these ancients. A really, really, really good expansion all the way across the board. I'm giving this an 8.5 out of 10, a seal of excellence. Uh, I really am excited to continue to see where Wildlands goes. I hope that there's a lot more content for it because I've been happy with everything that I've seen so far. Keep it coming. That's it for me. This is Mike Delisio signing off from Dice Tower Headquarters. <laughs>